voice. Hello again everyone! Today we're going to be venturing off into what I think is a first for this channel, but definitely not a first for me as an artist. I want to start off by saying that this idea was definitely inspired by Dina Norland's random creature designs. Creature design is something I've been interested in and doing for many years now, but I feel like it's been a couple months at least since I've done it, so I just kind of wanted to try and get back into it and stop being so rusty. So this is basically an exercise of taking three random existing animals and mashing them up into a new and hopefully cohesive animal. This is an experimental kind of thing for the channel. Um, I really enjoy doing this, so let me know if y'all like this kind of content and I'll definitely do more of these. But yes, I actually made an animal randomizer in Google Sheets about a year ago, so I dusted it off and used it for this. The three animals that spat out for me were the Japanese macaque, blue wildebeest, and helmet pigeon. I'll go into the sketching and design process in just a second, but what you're seeing now is the design I ended up with and printed out on my watercolor paper. Hopping into Procreate, here is the process of actually exploring this creature and trying to figure out uh, where, where I wanted to go with it. I knew right off the bat that I wanted the main influences on this creature to be the Japanese macaque and blue wildebeest with only a hint of the helmet pigeon. Of the two main influences, I wanted the Japanese macaque to be the biggest contributor to this creature's body plan. The main place where I wanted to have hints of all three animals was in the face, so my first struggle was figuring out how to mesh all of them in a way that wasn't too obviously any one animal. Ultimately, I decided to have the face lean primarily toward the wildebeest since I didn't want this creature to just look like a gigantic macaque. Um, next, I started playing around with how to set up the body. I did think about trying to add more of the pigeon into the body at this point, but since I'm a little rusty at creature design, I wanted to keep this one simple and quick, so I chose to just stick with the other two animals like I planned on in the beginning. Since I didn't want to shun the pigeon completely, I added small nods to its influence in the shape of the creature's mane as well as the little beak-like structure of its nose and upper lip. I also played around with adding big horns to this critter, but it ended up looking a little too top-heavy and also too similar to the minotaurs from Guild Wars 2, at least in my opinion. Admittedly, I was getting frustrated with trying to figure out the face during these exploratory sketches, so I decided I needed to keep the final post simple and just dove right into fine-tuning my anatomy choices as I did the line art. I feel like sometimes I work best when I just jump in like this as opposed to spending ages in the planning stage because if I spend too long planning, I tend to get impatient and the impatience makes me make mistakes that then discourage me from continuing. So sometimes I just gotta go for it, which is what happened here. Even though the design and pose are simple, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. I wanted the pose to show as much of the creature as possible and also give a sense of how it moves and bears its weight rather than going with the previous attempt at a more flashy pose. I wanted to do a little bit of a background for this piece to show where the creature might live. Looking back, I realized the little cliff behind it doesn't make sense because he doesn't look like he just landed from a jump, but like, we'll ignore that. I got the feeling this creature probably lives in a herd since all the animals it's made from live in groups. I wish I'd had time to draw more of these just to give that group living atmosphere, even if it was just a baby, but that would have taken away the simple aspect I was going for, but yeah, definitely a herd animal. 
and as you might be able to tell from the background and how fluffy they are, I intended for them to exist in cold, mountainous terrain. I am not exactly sure what they eat, but whatever it is probably requires some degree of digging or cracking, hence the tiny beak. With the snowy environment, it seemed like a no-brainer to make this creature light-colored so it can blend in. I tried to give subtle hints to the three animals it's made up of with the coloration as well, so the light yellowish color is inspired by the macaque, um, the stripes on the back are from the wildebeest, and the concentration of darker coloration on the head is something that seems pretty common in the helmet pigeon. I guess that's why they're called the helmet pigeon. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the design. It was fun starting with something low pressure just to get back into this exercise. I used to do this a bunch for world building purposes, but these past couple years I haven't really felt as inspired to work on my head worlds as I did when I was younger, which is a shame. But to be honest, it felt kind of stressful sometimes being my perfectionist self and trying to make creatures that made sense living in a bigger world and were interconnected with each other and ecosystems and such, but I think with this, just doing one-off creature designs is just a lot more enjoyable. Getting a little off topic here, but I wanted to blabber a little bit about my plans for future content for the channel. I've been on YouTube for over a year now, although my activity has been a little spotty in the past few months. I used to try and post every week in the beginning, but my job and other real life stuff started getting in the way, so now I've had to dial it back to just uploading whenever I have time and inspiration. I think something I've been struggling with a lot lately is just trying to figure out what my niche is. Like I've said before, I have a lot of trouble doing anything without a prompt and I think that might be because of how busy I can get sometimes, I just don't have much time to think up ideas of what I actually want to draw. Or I think of ideas and then forget them as soon as I get home. So now that I've realized this, I want to start taking steps to tackle it and I think something that might help is deciding on a handful of series to do for the channel. I feel it would definitely help me be more consistent and give me an overarching theme just as a jumping off point for videos. So far I have a couple of ideas, I don't know if y'all have noticed, but I really don't like drawing people that much so all of my series ideas lean toward animals and creatures so yeah, just don't expect much from me as much as uh, as far as human art. But yes, on to my main idea so far. I did that lore limelight video a little while back um, with the obscure cryptids, but that video got me thinking. I've really been into iceberg videos lately, as are many people, and I found a cryptid iceberg that looks really extensive. I was thinking it might be fun to pivot a little from the lore limelight series and attempt to draw the entire cryptid iceberg as its own series, since it would take quite a while to get through, doing maybe one to two, three, one, two, three cryptids per video. I don't know why that was so hard to say. But I love weird and creepy stuff and that sort of thing really inspires me, so I'd love to do something like that and explore these weird creatures in my own style. So yeah, series idea number one is drawing the entire cryptid iceberg. Like with most things, I'd probably switch up mediums for almost every video just to keep things fresh and challenging. Another front runner in my series ideas is just to do more of this, designing random creatures. It's really fun and fairly quick for me to do, so it'd be more of a breather type of video that I can just throw together on weeks that are super busy. So those are my top two. Um, I'm pretty sure I had more, but I forgot them as soon as I sat down to write this. So I might consider doing a more laid back version of Inktober as well and making a short series out of that, but we'll see. Inktober is pretty work heavy, so I don't know how that would work out. Um, if you have any ideas, feel free to let me know, and also let me know what you think of my current series ideas. Like I said, I definitely want to stick to themes that are centered around animals and made-up creatures, so pretty much anything I can include that in, I'm probably game for. I have a lot of motivation to make videos right now because it's something I love doing, but I need to just work on building up my topic ideas, so it's not so much of a struggle to pull a topic out of thin air when I have the time and will to actually feel something. If to film something, if that makes any sense. Back to the piece at hand. I forgot to apologize for the lighting situation in the beginning of this video, but yeah, sorry if you noticed the lighting changing and just being generally bad. We had a bunch of rain clouds roll in as I was working on this and they killed my natural lighting. 
But anyways, I decided to pull out my colored pencils to pump up the shadows for this one. I did have some darker watercolors I could have used, but I was afraid of ruining that icy blue shading with something that was way darker. So I opted to go for colored pencils since I could have a little more control over those shadows. I also relined this piece a bit since the line art was really light to begin with, and then got even more light because of the watercolor. And as finishing touches, I added some whiskers and also a cold weather breath puff, which didn't show up very well, but the intent was there and that's all that matters. So that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed this quick little experimental-ish video and again, let me know if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing. I think I can manage to get more crazy and inventive with creatures as I dust off my skills. So with that, thank you all for watching. Give the video a like if you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.